everyone. Thank you so much for joining the Aquarium Online Academy for our exploration of different animals and numbers. My name is Stacy. I'm coming to you from the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California, and I hope that you're ready today to try to figure out what animals we're looking at. So what do you see behind me? You probably see a bunch of fish, right? And these fish are really, really colorful. Now we're going to try to find a lot of different animals around the aquarium and even a little bit in the ocean by looking at some videos and pictures today. And when we do that, we'll try to count them. Now I don't think we want to try to count these ones, especially as they're moving around. That's pretty tough. But we'll do that with some other pictures and videos. Now if you have any questions or if you want to share your thoughts, please text us. We have a text number right down here, 562-286-1838. And please remember to ask permission because data rates may apply, all right? So I hope that you are ready for our exploration today. We're going to get it all started by watching a fun little video. And if you know the animal in that video, I want you to say what it is. Just tell the computer. <laughs> Tell the screen. Um, and then if you can count it, if there's enough time and you can count how many there are on that screen, please do. All right, let's get started. <laughs> that video and we ended with the animals that look like us right those were scuba divers checking out the ocean and I think I saw two of them all right so again remember we are going to be looking for animals in the next uh, in in the pictures and videos that we have here and we're going to see if we can count how many there are or maybe how many different things they have like arms or eyes or feet or something like that, all right? So let's get started with our first animal. Whoa, what's this? It's a sea turtle, that's right. This is a green sea turtle. Now it's hard to tell it's green because the water is so blue that it kind of changes the colors a little bit. But this is the sea turtle is green and it's also called a green sea turtle. Now, how many sea turtles do you see in this picture? Ba -ba! One, right? <laughs> okay, so we see one sea turtle here in this picture. Okay, let's see what else we have in store for us. Let's look at our next picture. What animals do you see in this one? Ooh, what are those? Those are called puffins. Yeah, you may have said birds. You are absolutely right. These are, t uh, are birds, right? And these birds are called horned puffins. Take a look at its eye. Can you find its eye? Point to it if you see it. It's a little bit tough. They're kind of small, but there's one right here. So that bird has that one eye there. There's one that's hiding. And the same thing for this bird. There's one right here and the other one's on the other side of its face. It's kind of hiding from the picture here. But that, that black line that's coming from its eye, that is a special feather that looks like a horn and that's how I know it's a horn puffin. Now, how many horn puffins do you see here? Let's see, we have one and two. We have two horn puffins. Very cool. Now, wait a minute. 
How did we know that these were horned puffins? What colors do you see? I see black and I see white. So we have black and white, but there's some other birds out there that have black and white too. Those ones are penguins, but do they look like penguins? Maybe the colors are, are kind of similar, but they have a different shape, right? So that's how we know that these are puffins, but they're definitely birds. And you know what's really fun? Not only do they fly in the air, like a lot of birds do, but it's like they fly under water. They can actually dive underneath the water to catch their food, which is little fish. And when they do that, they flap their wings under the water to push them through. And that is how they uh, swim. They actually fly in the air with their wings and fly underwater with their wings. Pretty fun. All right, oh, here's another puffin. How many do we see? We see one. Do you think it's the same as the last puffin or different? What's something you see that's different? I think the beak looks a little different. This one is, is very orange. The other one wasn't as orange. What else? Do we see a horn? That, that black line? No, it's not there. Instead, I see this really cool, it looks like a hairdo, but it's made of feathers because it's a bird, right? So this one here is a tufted puffin because it has a tuft of feathers. Very fun. All right. So we now know puffins and we were able to count two puffins in the first picture and one puffin in this picture. Oh boy. Do you recognize these, these little animals here? These are fish. Do you know what kind of fish? They're clownfish. What colors do you see that tell us these are clownfish? I see orange, white, and black. And that's how I know that these are clownfish. They're mostly orange with white stripes and little black lines. Now, how many clownfish do we see in this picture? There's this big one right here, so that's one. There's this one right here, that's two. And there's the little one right there. That's three. How many do you see? I see three. All right, so we have three clownfish here in this picture. But did you know there's another animal in the picture? All of those little wiggly lines, those are tentacles to an animal called a sea anemone. And that is where, oh, cool. This is a sea anemone. This is where a clownfish can live. This is its home. It lives among all these tentacles. And it's really great that they can because these tentacles can sting most fish. So it's great protection for the clownfish. The clownfish is special. They have something that's kind of like slime on their body. And the slime matches the anemone. So they're kind of like, they have the same kind of slime on them. That way the anemone doesn't hurt the clownfish. Instead, it protects it from other animals. Now, wait a minute, take a look at this picture. What do we see going on here? This is another anemone fish. So this is another fish that lives in sea anemones. This one's a little different. Do you see orange, white, and black? Mm -mm. What do we see? I see a white line. I see a big eye, but this is pink. Right? So we know this is a little bit different than the other fish that we saw, but it still lives in a sea anemone. These are the anemone tentacles. Wow, very cool. How many fish do we see in this picture? Yeah, just one. How many eyes do we see? Ah, I just saw one. <laughs> the other eye was hiding, right? So our three clownfish friends were very cool to check out the number three. Okay, let's move on to our next animals. Whoa. Let's take a look. What are these? Oh boy, I see jellies. And these jellies are called moon jellies. They're called moon jellies, I think, because it looks like a full moon. Now, these moon jellies are pretty interesting. It's hard to count how many there are because there's some in the back, there's some on the side. I think this one up here is hiding. So it's a little tough to count, but we can count what's inside its body. Do you see this? It looks like a, the letter U, right? And that little letter U there, that is the anemone, or excuse me, the jelly stomach. 
So how many U's do you see? How many stomachs does a moon jelly have? Let's count. There's one, two, three, four. How many did you see? I saw four. Let's count it again. One, two, three, four. Oh my goodness, this jelly has four stomachs. We have one stomach. And we, when we eat, the food goes into our stomachs. That's right. And it's the same thing with these jellies. When they eat, the food goes in their stomachs. But how does a jelly eat? They don't have hands to grab food. So how do they catch their food? Let's take a quick look right down here. So you see all those tiny things? They look like eyelashes. Those teeny tiny things right there, those are their tentacles. So just like when we talked about the sea anemone having tentacles that sting, jellies have the same thing. These long tentacles that look like lines that can sting. And that is how they catch their food. Now, a lot of jellies will eat plankton. In fact, they eat plankton that's itty bitty. And so they don't need to sting very hard to catch that plankton. And when they sting it, then the food goes on these floofy things. Do you see all this floof in the center? All of that right there, those are their oral arms or mouth arms. So that takes the food whoop, up to their mouth. But wait a minute, where's the jelly's mouth? Can you see a mouth? It's hard to see it. It's their see-through. So you'd think that you can find the mouth, but it's really tough to see. It's kind of more just like an opening. Now, do you see right here? There are four stomachs, right? Right in the center, but underneath. That's where their mouth is. So that's where the food goes in, and then it can go to their stomachs. Now, we have a question from Alex and Olivia. Why do they have four stomachs? That's a great question. I am not sure. I have a feeling they have four stomachs so they can eat the right amount of food for them because their stomachs are kind of little. Our stomach is like a big bag. And so when we eat, the food goes into the bag so we can actually hold a lot of food. How much food have you eaten? I feel like I've eaten a lot of food, especially recently. But their stomachs are like a U. And so it doesn't really hold a lot. It's not like a bag. So instead, they have to have a lot of stomachs to hold uh, the right amount of food that they need to survive. So that's a really good question. Okay, Adara is asking, why are jellies round on the top? Did you notice that too? The top here is like a giant circle and it actually domes up like that. Well, let's see if we can um, maybe get a, um, a web camera or something like that up that has some jellies in it so we can see how they move because the top of them is a really important part of a jelly. That has all of their, um, their inside bits, right? Their organs like their stomachs, um, but it also is how they move. So if we can watch what jellies do when they move, then we'll know how they use that round top that is called a bell. So how are they moving that bell? Do you see it gets big and small, then big, then small. It opens and closes a little bit, right? So that's how a jelly moves. That big round top goes up and down, up and down. If you want to, you can be a jelly with me. It moves up and down and that's what pushes it through the water. Whoop. Pretty cool. So that round top is perfect for swimming. Now, do you think they move very fast or kind of slow? What do you see? I see them moving kind of slow. So they're not the best swimmers out there. In fact, if I was swimming, next to them very carefully because I don't want to get stung. I think I could probably swim a little bit faster. Jellies are much better at drifting in the water. So when the water and waves move, they kind of get pushed along with it, just like these ones are. Whoop, these ones are right here. They're kind of getting pushed along with the movement of the water in their exhibits. But they can move a little bit just by opening and closing that top part, that round bell. All right, thanks for the question, Adara. Okay, so we know 
that jellies have four stomachs. I think we have counted uh, one turtle, two puffins, three clownfish, four jelly stomachs. What animal are we going to see next? Oh, what's that? It's a sea star, of course. Now, some of you may have said starfish, and that's okay, too. That's kind of like another nickname, okay? So sea star, starfish, same thing. They're just not fish. That's why I call it a sea star. Now, let's see. How many sea stars are in this picture? I see one, but they have arms. Now, how many arms do we have? I have two, okay? How many do you have? Okay, so how many arms did this star have? Let's count. There's one, two, three, four, five. Five arms. So this sea star here has five arms. And we're actually looking at the belly of the sea star. We're looking at the underside that we don't usually get to see because this one is stuck to a window. Isn't that cool? Now on these arms, you see all these little polka dots? All those little polka dots are their feet. And their little feet have like suction cups on them. So they're able to stick to something like a rock or a window. It also helps them to walk around because believe it or not, sea stars do walk. They may not be fast, but they walk kind of slowly and gracefully across a rock, an ocean floor, a window. <laughs> and of course, the very center here is its mouth. So this is where the sea star would eat from. Now, sea stars are kind of weird because a lot of them, instead of just sucking food into the mouth, their tummies, their stomachs come out of their mouth to kind of make their food soft. And then it gets sucked back inside. So it's almost like they have to make their food soft and smooth like a smoothie before they can actually put it inside their bodies because their bodies are a little bit on the small side. But they use their five arms to help them walk to find food and also to capture that food. Now let's see, do most stars have five arms? Let's take a look. I see a lot of stars. Actually, let's first look at how many stars we see. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, those are the ten stars in this picture. Now, how many arms do these stars have? This one here has one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that one has five. Let's, let's count this one. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, how about the one next to it? One, two, three, four, five. So most of these stars have five arms, right? Not all stars have five arms, but many do. It's pretty common. Okay, we have a question from Jack. Jack wants to know, how do plankton eat? Oh, Jack, well, there are so many different kinds of plankton out there. That's a tough question to answer. There are some plankton like these ones that are kind of like plants. They just need to float around and they need sunlight and they make their own food using the sunlight, just like a plant or a tree does here on land. But there are other kinds of plankton that are more like animals and they need to actually eat and they might eat things like this, okay? And they might even eat other little plankton. Now, uh, some of you may have an idea of what plankton looks like because of a cartoon that has plankton on it. It kind of looks like an oval and it has two little antenna and one eyeball. Those ones are called copepods and a copepod is an animal plankton. In fact, there are more copepods in this world than any other animal on our planet. It's crazy. Now they're kind of little, they're tough to see, um, but we were able to use a microscope and take a picture and actually get this one. Now this one is not from us. Uh, somebody else made uh, or took this picture, but you can see what a copepod looks like. It's an oval body with two antenna. And this thing right here, that's the eye. Now it does have a little mouth. So this one is going to be eating other 
smaller animal plankton. All right, so now we know plankton eat too, right? Some of them use the sunlight to make energy like a plant, and some of them actually eat um, just like animals, like big animals do. Very cool. Now let's move on to our next video. This one is a video, and we're going to see how many, actually first we need to figure out what they are, and then we're going to see how many are in the video. So what are these? Oh my goodness. They're skinny. They're in the sand. These are garden eels. Yeah, these are little eels that live in the sand. And when they're scared, they hide. And when they need to eat, they stretch out of the sand to catch the little floaty things. And that's their food. They do eat plankton too, so it's kind of good that we already talked about plankton. Um, and maybe somebody's leftovers that got spread around in the water. How many garden eels do we see? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, and six. There's six garden eels. Very cool. Now, if you were looking very carefully, you may have also found the sneaker eel. Look at the little one. So now we can see how they hide so well in the sand. So there are six eels that are stretching tall. One eel that's hiding in the sand. Then how many eels do we see? If there are six plus one, we have seven. There are seven eels in the sand. Pretty cool. Okay, so we have a few more questions. Let's look at a star. Okay, so CJ is asking, do stars have eyes? Let's see if the eyes are obvious on a sea star. Take a look. Not obvious. They don't have eyes like we do. Our eyes let us see pictures and color and movement, right? So that's what we can see. Now a sea star, they do have eyes, but the eyes that they have are not the same. Their eyes are on the ends of their arms. Do you remember how many arms a sea star has? Five, which means they also have five eyes. Remember the end of each of their arms, okay? Now those eyes are different than us. Our eyes see the pictures and the movement and the colors and all of those sorts of things, right? For a sea star, their eyes only see light and dark. So if you take a look right at that end there is what they're going to have to help them see light and dark. So if you close your eyes, it might be kind of bright, right? Now cover your eyes with your hands. That's dark. Now take your hands away. That's light. That's what they see. Oh, what's from Kobe? Oh, we have some pictures from Kobe, okay, about jellies. Okay, or so questions from Kobe about jellies. <laughs> We're gonna bring up a picture of jellies. Uh, let's see, do jellyfish eat other jellies? Kobe, yes, they do. Some of them eat plankton, some of them eat other jellies. Some jellies even eat fish. All right, and then we have, do jellies sting their prey, then use their arms to sting? Oh, well, jellies will uh, usually sting their prey with those tentacles, the long straight lines. And then they use their arms, the, the mouth arms, the fluffy parts, to bring the food to their mouth. Some jellies on their mouth arms, they actually do have stingers. So they can sting not only with their tentacles, but also with their mouth arms. There's a lot of different types of jellies out there. And so they all are just a little bit different than each other in how they look, right? This one looks different and also how they can sting, how they move, where they live. Some jellies have uh, live more in warm water. Some live in the cold, cold, cold water where there's ice and snow, and some live in between. Some can even glow if you have special lights and, and a special filter. So um, other animals can see just like this all the time. So, oh, we have another jelly question from Ava. How many arms do jellies have? Well, again, we were talking about how jellies can be different, right? Well, look at all the floofs. It's hard to see how many there are because they're so floofy. I have a feeling, though, 
that a lot of them have four um, arms, but there, there might even be more. It's tough to tell. I think, let's see, I can kind of see in this picture maybe three or four for this jelly. So uh, that's a really great question. I think you may have stumped me a little bit. Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, we have Sebastian in San Diego asking, what do garden eels eat? Ooh, did you see those garden eels when they were stretching tall with their teeny tiny little mouths? All of the stuff that was floating around in the water, that's what they were eating. So sometimes it's plankton. All right, so the plankton floats around in the water and they're able to nom 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 eat the little plankton. Sometimes it's somebody's leftovers because some animals are not really the, the neatest eater, like my dog. When my dog eats, she eats from the bowl, but the food ends up outside the bowl and kind of all over the place. So if you think about an animal in the ocean, if they were eating and they were as messy as my dog, <laughs> all of the leftovers would float around in the water. And that's a really easy thing for something like a little garden eel to eat. Take a look at that mouth. Oh my goodness. Look at that mouth. It's got a frowny face. Can you make a frowny face? Yep. This is a garden eel. Okay. <laughs> Very cool. Well, let's move on to our next picture. And we'll have to try to count how many, or what do you see here? It's a shark. That's right. And this shark here, well, how many there are there? There's only one. But this shark has a lot of fins. Let's see if we can count how many fins it has. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It has seven fins and a tail. And those seven fins and a tail are what the shark moves to push it through the water. Now, do you think they use these fins and flap them around all crazy in order to move? No. Nope. What does a shark do to move through the water? Ah, the shark uses its tail. And does the shark tail move up and down or does it move side to side? What do you think? Well, the shark tail moves side to side. And that side to side tail is what pushes it through the water. All right, so sharks are pretty cool. They have those seven fins and a tail to help them swim. All right, let's look at our next animal because we're getting real close to out of time and we have more things to count. So we're gonna go from our shark here with seven fins. You may know the next, uh, the next thing that we're going to count. It's an octopus. Now octopuses have their name because of the number of arms they have but let's just make sure it's correct. Let's see, let's count the arms. Let's start with this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's right, this octopus has eight arms. That's why it's called octopus. Octo is eight. So an octopus has eight arms that they use to do all kinds of fun things. These things right here, those polka dots, those are their suction cups. It's how they stick to things like rocks and windows and the ocean floor. And they can walk around using those eight arms. Those eight arms are also real good for catching food to take to their mouth, which is right in the center on the bottom. All right, now we have a question from Ryan. Does an octopus blink? Ooh, good question, Ryan. Now, I've been able to see a lot of octopuses, and it doesn't seem like they have eyelids like we do. So I think even a sleeping octopus has their eyes open. Their eyes look a little bit different than ours do, and that's why sometimes they're tough to see. All right, and I think Ryan is also asking, why do they have eight feet? Well, they have these eight arms because they need to be able to move around, right? And so having eight of them helps them to move. It gets them to be very strong so they can catch their prey too. So it's pretty cool that they have those eight very, very strong arms. Okay, uh, now let's move on to our next number. And in order to do that, we're going to have to turn the light on for um, a different view. This one isn't just a picture. This is a special camera that we have here in the studio. 
Whoa, look at all these beautiful shells. Let's count how many shells there are. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's right, there are nine shells here. And all of these shells belong to animals. The animals grew the shells when they were alive. Now they are not alive anymore, but that is how we get shells like these. Okay, now uh, let's see. I wanna answer just a few more of your questions here. Uh, we have George asking about jellies. George wants to know, do jellies have brains? Uh, that's a good question. No, they don't. Jellies don't have brains, but you know what's crazy is they can still live even without a brain. Now we use our brain to think and our brain is also helping um, things to move. Like if you wanted to walk over there, you can walk over there. If you wanted to wiggle your arms, you can wiggle your arms because your brain is helping you with that. But your brain also helps to make sure you're breathing and your heart beats and, and your brain does a lot for us, right? Our brains do a ton, but for a jelly, they don't need that. They're very, very simple and their bodies just kind of move. They just kind of react. So they don't need brains. And we can see that, right? When we look at them, we didn't even see a brain in there. We don't see a heart either. So they're pretty simple animals, making them a little bit complicated. Okay, so we have a few more questions about eels. Let's see, we have Melissa asking, how do eels eat? Oh, we actually, um, we're talking about what they eat, right? We had Sebastian asking the question of what they eat. And so we figured that out, but how do they eat? Well, Melissa, do you remember that frowny face? Well, that frowny face is their little mouth. And so when they hide in the sand, they need to stretch out of the sand in order to eat. So their little mouths can open and close and they can suck in their food. Now, I don't think they have very big teeth because when I see them open their mouth and eat, I don't really see any teeth in there. They might have just teeny, teeny, tiny teeth that help them catch that tiny food that they're eating. So nice question. Let's watch them eat again and you can see how that happens. Okay, and then we also have a question from Nina about how garden eels are born. Well, garden eels do something called broadcast spawn. And what that means is that the eggs just kind of go up into the water. So when they lay eggs, it goes into the water and it floats around and eventually they hatch. And they're probably pretty teeny tiny when they hatch. And at some point they're going to um, be able to find some sand and settle in and just be itty bitty versions of all those cute little garden eels that we saw there. Okay, so I think that we've been able to answer most of those questions. Oh, we do have some questions about sharks though. Let's see, Declan is asking, how many teeth do sharks have? Oh my goodness, Declan, I can't count them all. They have a lot of teeth. Here's a crazy number for you. Sharks' teeth fall out pretty often. They don't have hard bones like we do, so their teeth don't sink into the bone. If you feel right here on you, that's a hard bone, and your teeth kind of anchor in, and that's why our teeth don't fall out all the time. Sharks don't have that, so they can lose teeth a lot. They can lose up to 30,000 teeth in their life. So they don't have all 30,000 at one time, but it tells you that they must have a ton of teeth. All right, Daphne is asking, do sharks eat other sharks? Daphne, yes, sharks, a lot of them eat fish and a shark is a kind of fish. So they'll eat um, fish like a tuna, but they'll also eat fish like other sharks. So a lot of times sharks are going to eat things that are smaller than themselves. Um, and so a big shark might eat a small shark. All right, and then we have, why do sharks have so many fins? All of those fins have a purpose for swimming. Some of them help to, um, so they don't just go down when they're swimming. Some of them help give them some lift, like an airplane's wings give them lift, okay? And some of them help because they look like a football shape. And that football shape would spin if they went really fast, just like a football does when it flies through the water, right? And so a lot of these fins are there so they don't spin, so they can stay straight and not get dizzy when they're swimming. Okay, and then we have a handful of questions about octopuses. We are running out of time. So I think, you know, I love all the questions that you have, but I think we're going to have to answer your questions uh, through text in just a moment, okay? But let's, let's see, Eleanor is asking, do octopuses ink? 
How did you know? Yes, they do. Why do you think they ink? It's for protection. It's a way to kind of use like a curtain of ink and then they can get away if something's trying to get to them, right? So that ink is really great for them to be able to get away. Not only does the ink make a cloud of dark, it also smells different than an octopus. So the octopus can get away pretty easily. All right, we have Nina asking, what does an octopus eat? Oh, they like to eat things that they usually find towards the bottom of the ocean. They'll eat shrimp and clams and crabs and squid and sometimes other octopuses, fish. They eat a lot of different things. So good question, Nina. Connor wants to know where the octopus's mouth is. It's right here in the bottom in the center of all their arms. So if you were able to follow all the arms to the middle and look under the octopus, it has a mouth right there. And then Cooper asks, can they smell? Cooper, they can. Do you see a nose on this octopus? I don't see a nose because they don't use a nose for smelling. They use their suction cups. Look at all those suction cups. Those are used for smelling. So it's kind of crazy to think about. It's a lot like taste, okay? So smell and taste kind of sense the chemicals around them. And so that's what they're doing. All right, so it's a lot like taste. Taste and smell in the ocean are really, really similar. Well, my friends, we are well over our time. So we are all done counting all the different animals that we were able to look at today. Thank you all so very much for participating. I love all your questions. I hope you had some fun looking at animals, learning and counting with me. We have many more classes today. So I hope that you can join us for our Aquarium Online Academy and, uh, that's me, Stacy, signing off. All right, bye, all.